Hi everyone, thanks for joining us here, Level Up with me, Lindy Pearson. Today I have one of my favorite people on, Mr. Matthew Swearman. He is the Senior Director of Development and Donor Relations at Valley Village, and he actually is really super near and dear to my heart. As you guys know, um, with some of our clients, ton of people, ton of nonprofits, ton of community work, volunteer work, and I was able to come across Matt, and now he is in my circle. So without further ado, Matt, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure, Lindy. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. So just a little bit about Valley Village before we start. Um, so I'm going to just, I'm going to read a couple things because I couldn't memorize all of this. But uh, there's over 400 men and women with developmental challenges through semi-independent condos, 14 family-style homes, three homes that offer nursing care, adult development center, two adult day health care centers. In addition to running all that is a staff of over 350 people. That's now, right. That's awesome. And pre-COVID, I would say maybe, you know, even manageable. But nowadays, when things are happening, what's going on for you guys? Uh, well, you're right. It pre-COVID, you know, it was actually challenging then. But now, uh, during COVID, it's it's very interesting. We've had to um, modify and adjust in many ways. Our day programs, our adult development centers, and our adult day health centers are all delivering services virtually. They've had to pivot because by state order, we had to actually close those services down in terms of in-person services. Yeah. So our staff have been able to, they actually had to create new program plans in order to pivot to delivering those services virtually via Zoom for our clients. Um, and then the Residential clients, whether they're in semi-independent, the medical homes or the group homes, those folks are all receiving um, their service. They're, they're participating in day program virtually as well, but um, they weren't able to, they are not able to participate in their weekend programs, which every weekend we would go out into the community and take different field trips to museums, to parks, to um, different events. Um, so they definitely feel isolated in their homes. The other really sad thing is, you know, you and I, have talked about the fact that we can't see our families outside of our immediate homes. So neither can our clients and neither can their parents. So that's, that's, um, that can be really depressing for them. Um, yeah. So it really puts a lot of pressure on our care providers within the homes to um, provide enrichment and, and really help lift up their spirits. And yeah. it also really falls onto us as a team to stay in contact with our parents and find meaningful ways for the houses to connect yeah. with the parents to the children. Yeah. So, you know, um, all these people, the caregivers, the people who need help, some of the other family who are trying to figure out how to work with their children inside their home and their elderly grandparents or adult kids, how things are going. What is your typical client? I know your typical client, but you know, for the viewers out there, I want to, you know, I want to get them really involved in this because you really, really have to consider that all of the services that you provide, they're all in person. You know, you have all these different skills, these sensory skills, home ec classes. I mean, there's some pretty basic things that they really need to be taught that is almost impossible to do virtually. How are you keeping up with this? How is this, how is this happening? That's a good point. You think about how challenging it's been for parents with their children at home who are uh, participating in virtual school, who are doing that in the spring, and now they're going back to that this fall. So apply that to a person with a developmental disability, and it's, it's challenging. Um, but so each of our, there are a lot of things here. So a lot of layers. So every single person in our program, they're all adults. They're women and men, youngest in their early 20s, oldest in their early to mid 70s. And every single person has what we call an IPP, an individual program plan. And within that plan, there are goals and objectives for each person, and they're modified and adjusted as they make progress toward their goals. But so for instance, now their goal might be 
wearing a mask when they're out in public at like a grocery store. Well, they probably they aren't going to a grocery store, but when they're on a walk in the community. Um, or um, utilizing a tablet or a laptop to participating in virtual classrooms. Um, and like you said, since they're done in person, they would typically participate in, say, gross motor skills. We, you've seen our gross motor skills room, which has all sorts of exercise equipment, um, and we help folks to ambulate and maintain their abilities. So those goals have been modified to do those in a hallway, perhaps, in their own home. Um, so a lot has changed. But in terms of the typical client, you know, folks come to us you know, at various stages in their life. It just depends where they are. But we've developed what we call a continuum of care so that we can provide the right care for each person at the, wherever they are at that point in their life. And we can provide that care throughout their life, which is why we call That's it a continuum great. of care. Okay. And um, it's pretty awesome. Oh, I love that. All right. Well, since we're on this tech kick um you know again i hate i hate to even use the c word but it's it's so relevant um for this conversation and that that has to do with events we like all of our networking stuff we did mm -hmm. events 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 small events mm -hmm. ceo events mm -hmm. um and now you know just like you said people are having to do these things on a tablet online mm -hmm. Um, there was a, another nonprofit that we did something called a non-event, mm -hmm. and we chose to do that. That was actually one of our last events for a Child Family Guidance Center. And I thought to myself, man, this is really hard to do a non-event, you know? This is really hard. And now, with us being forced to do it virtually-wise, um, how are you doing it? Because I know your last event, you canceled, I think, two times to reschedule the date. <laughs> Yeah, that's I want to yeah, I I right. hear I want to hear about all this. I want to hear about the events, the time, the date. Um, I really want to hear about some of your honey sponsorships as well. And I know you have a special guest. So. Sure. So, um, yeah, we were originally having a country western event at the Valley of Relics Museum, which allegedly you introduced me to the Valley of Relics Museum. Love so. That place. Someday we will have an event there in person, <laughs> but you're absolutely right. Like a lot of other organizations, we were faced with the decision, should we even have an event? But you know, you also have to recognize that that brings in a significant amount of revenue for our programs to support the work that we're doing to help each individual live as independently as possible. That's always our goal. So we decided to host the event online and we, th we really wanted to help folks connect with our mission. We really wanted to help folks have an experience that would be enriching for them because let's face it, we're all feeling kind of stuck right now. We're moving forward, but we're kind of stuck. And we wanted to bring a fun, enjoyable experience. It's kind of a, a little getaway to everyone's home. So we thought about the name Coming, we came up with the concept of the Valley Village Couch Concert. And I love it. I love it. I'm so excited, um, and I'm glad you love it. But um, so we're we're actually partnering with Valley Village music instructor, whose name is Juno Rada, and Juno uh, is uh, an American Idol contestant. Uh, and a golden ticket winner, uh, but he started at Valley Village as a volunteer and um, because volunteerism is very important to him, and and he, he's a testament to the fact that you know you don't have to start out as a big donor or a board member. Absolutely. Starting points can happen anywhere, and in his case, one day for his volunteer work, he said, "You know, I, I I'm a musician. I'd really like to bring my guitar." to work so I can sing with clients or sing to clients. Yeah, but you know what? Wait, I, I have to interrupt you. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Like, this is exactly what I'm talking about for Valley Village. I Like, again, sorry to interrupt, but when you go to this place and you think of adults that have disabilities that are almost like the forgotten people because, mm -hmm. you know, society is going really fast these days, and then you have someone, just a volunteer, just an intern, just as something, and like inspired them to go get their guitar and to be a part of this. What you're doing, Matt, is unbelievable. Not many people 
can take just four walls and a roof and turn it into something that's so great. So please continue, you. but you do such a good job at that. Thank you. I appreciate that. And you know, it's a happy place. I think a lot of folks have a preconceived notion about what it's going to be when before they arrive and then they arrive and they see what you saw, the happy faces, the folks that are having just a good time, they're engaging in fun activities that are therapeutic, that they enjoy, and they're socializing and it works on so many different skills for them. But, uh, and Juno is just one example of many people who enrich their lives and at the same time, it enriches our lives. Um, so Juno is gonna give us all a special concert and the similar to the way he performs for our clients on a daily basis, mm -hmm. he's going to provide music by request. So if you go to our website, valleyvillage.org, on the right side, there's a little Valley Village Couch Concert logo. You can check out the details, just click on that. But all the music is by request. And cool. you know, our clients will go up to him and say, play Michael Jackson or play Queen. <laughs> um, so it's kind of like that. So you just get your song request in advance. And we're going to have a special guest. Um, who I'm happy to say is uh, Fritz Coleman, formerly of NBC4. Huh? So he's going to be our yeah. MC. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we're very excited about that. And we have a special connection with Fritz as well. He has been our uh, a comedian at our previous event. Um, so we're very happy to have him back, and I think he's happy to be back with us. But it's um, at cool. September September 10th at 5.30 in the evening, hosted on Zoom, and um, it's going to last about an hour and a half. And we really don't – we'll have some speaking here and there, and Fritz, of course, will be the MC, so he'll have some liberties to entertain us all. So that's definitely going to be fun, but it's really about the music, and we want to give you as much music right. as we can so that you can kind of – have a, have a break from the world. What um what are some of the sponsors sponsorships that that you guys did? Um, I forget yeah. I forget the names, but they were <laughs> they were so good. Yeah, we wanted to do something fun with the theme, and you know, this is really a chance for us to break out of our mold and try something new, right? So we're forced to do it, so we may as well be all in. So since it's the couch concert, we thought we'd come up with some fun sponsorship levels. We have a couch potato level. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a couch surfer level. And then there's also, or I'm sorry, they're packages. And then there's also a um, pajama party package. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so each package comes with various benefits, but they all come with tickets to the concert. They also come with um, DoorDash gift cards to the concert. Um, and it's all based on the value. It's commensurate to the value so that you can share with different friends, family, colleagues, and we, uh, we just, you sign up, we send you a link to the concert, we send you a link to your virtual DoorDash card. Some of, now some of the upper levels, like the, actually all three, uh, let me think about this. The pajama party comes with a nice bottle of booze, so you can get, uh, with, yeah, you can get, and we're not going to, you know, we're getting top shelf booze here so exactly so the first the pajama party is going to come with a bottle of whiskey or you can swap that up for tequila or vodka or gin and then the next level is the uh down is the uh couch surfer and that's going to come with a bottle of vodka and then the 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 lower level the couch potato is going to come with a bottle of red or white wine it has to come with uh, potato chips too. It just, it's, it's <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, you know, you can get a side of potato chips with your uh, DoorDash. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. definitely. Mm -hmm. um, so something that, that I find interesting, um, you know, in your title, you know, a lot of people view you, um, you know, they kind of see you coming from a mile away asking for money and asking mm -hmm. for sponsorships. And, you know, all, all you're trying to do is just, get get more people introduced you know find some new programs um you know help help the clientele how how are some things misconstrued for just the simple fundraising to get out of that like you know box what are, now, what are some of the things there yeah i there are several and i i agree with you people say oh gosh matt's gonna ask me for money here he comes yeah but um you know one of the easiest things that anybody can do is to just follow us, follow our pages. Our so what are, 
What are some of your handles? Uh, Valley Village LA. It's consistent across the board. Just go to Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, and it's Valley Village LA. Um, and then could, so, you, could you give your email address just in case anyone wants to reach out to you um, for the event? And if not, obviously, all of you guys can reach out to me. Absolutely. My email is Matthew, M-A-T-T-H-E-W, at vvc.org. Perfect. And the website is valleyvillage.org. Uh, but yeah, the, you know, I think a lot of folks think, oh gosh, he just wants money. And I, I'm always happy to accept cash donations, let's face it. But we need volunteers. And you know, it's kind of like the way the programs are about the clients. The experience that you get when you um, decide to share your time with Valley Village, it is about you and we want it to be enriching for you. So whether you come to us and say, hey, I know you have an event or I heard about your event, so I want to attend or I want to volunteer, what, you know, this is what I can do or I'm interested in serving on a board um, or, um, you know, I just have a few extra uh, hours during the day. Can I come by? Is there anything you need to clean or organize in the office? There's just so many ways to get involved. We have an adopt a house program, which is actually pretty critical right now. When you think about how, again, I'll go back to how we all feel isolated in our homes. Yeah. And we have quite a few parents who've stepped up in our program to, you know, have, um, reach out to the house where their child lives, their adult child, and say, hey, we're oh. buying pizza tonight or we're sending over delivery tonight. You wouldn't believe how much they love that because it just breaks up the norm. And it also gives yeah. the, the house care providers a break because they're all stuck. So we like a little variety and they certainly love it. Um, so that's really a big call to action right now, aside from the event, um, adopt a house. Yeah. So if anybody would like to talk with me about that, I'd be happy to uh, share some insights and it doesn't have to be food. It can be, you can send right. some puzzles or games, paint, you know, any kind of enrichment that, uh, that will stimulate the folks because they, they get bored just like we get bored. Yeah, absolutely. What, um, what is the, the number one program at Valley village? I know that, you know, there's, there's different needs across the board, but, What's like the number one program and the number one thing that you would need help on for a volunteer just to have them, you know, give an idea at this point in time. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. At this point in time, I'd say adopt a house is the biggest okay. priority for the folks who are stuck okay. at home. Um, normally I would say Saturday recreation is a big deal, but until we get back to mm -hmm. some sort of, whatever normal looks like when it returns, we don't know. And we don't know when that's going to happen. Right. You know, that's something we can talk about down the line after adopt a house. Um, we're actually working to improve some of the gardens at our day programs. And since our clients can't attend the, cannot attend a program in person, um, it's an opportune time to actually come out and say, Hey, I want to work on your garden. Or if you don't want to work in the garden, make some donations of some plants or materials, uh, because they, they need it. And then at the homes, again, kind of like adopt a house. Um, if anyone wanted to donate some plants or something like that, or some activities for the yards, that's a good way to get involved. Yeah. I think, I think I'll, um, get maybe a list from you. You can email that to me and, and yeah. I look around some of, you know, some of the stuff I have, some of the stuff, you know, everyone's working from home, they're organizing, they're getting rid of stuff, they're, you know, Absolutely. stuff that they don't use and that's in great condition. So that's a great totally. suggestion. Yeah. yeah. Um, so now that you have, you know, you have mm -hmm. all these great ideas for, you know, there's also, I forgot to mention the 5k, 5k, right? We have a 510, uh, 5k, 10k run walk typically in the fall. Typically in the fall. Okay. Which we did that. I did that with kids. So any of you guys yes. out there who have children who need any sort of uh, community service hours or you need them to just get off of their amazing technology cell phones, um, mm -hmm. that'd be a great way to do it. Hopefully um, we're going to be able to figure something out by that time. Yeah. We're but, not sure what we're going to do with that event. So stay tuned. I'll yeah. keep you posted for That's sure. A tough one. That's a lot of strangers all in one place. Yeah, well, and we've thought about a virtual run walk where people do it on their own pace in their own yeah. neighborhoods, but that kind of takes the fun out of it for people. People really like to get yeah. together. So, you know, I'm looking at 
other options for other things we can do. So right. T TBD. Okay. Well, you know, you're always coming up with ideas. Yeah. Um, even just on this phone call, you know, um, how, how are we going to make it better? How are we going to make it where the entire community is served? Not just people who maybe have the means to, or, you know, they have an office at home, so things haven't really changed for them. People that really need it, like the people that are at your organization. It's so important. So how do you, you know, how do you get through your day when you need a little extra motivation? Like, how do you, how do you model your success? How do you gauge your success, especially right now in a world where you really only have a couple of choices and something like the couch potato option, the, the couch surfer, you know, all these things mm -hmm. that are so mm -hmm. fun, innovative. I know you have a team behind you, but yeah. like it also comes from you and your leadership. Um, you know, one of the things that... There are a lot of things I've had to do um, and that I continue to do. And I will say, I have to protect my space physically and mentally. And I have defined boundaries. My workspace is my workspace, whether I'm working at home or if I do actually get to go to the office. But especially if I'm at home, because I really need to maintain a, a difference between home and work when I'm at working at home and I know you know what I mean and it's hard to do um, because if when the two start to cross over it gets really wonky and I start to feel a little too much like well, Jack Torrance and the shining you know yeah it's hard to be organized like that yeah and so it just really it's I've I've gotten really I've, I've really gotten much better and improved my skills in terms of just defining boundaries for myself but it also has to do a lot with um, just the relationships that I have, like communicating with my boss when I can. She's a great sounding board for me, but also at home, my partner, Bill, is amazing. So, you know, I'm very fortunate that I am in a relationship with someone who I like, and I'm pretty sure he likes me too. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we've talked about that a lot. In fact, every day, pre-COVID and even during COVID, we do our things every day. We work whether I get home from the office on a day that I do actually go in because we have our own building, we have protocols in place, but I still am like wearing a mask and doing like lots of hand washing and all that good stuff every day. And but he's not going to his office. So it's really important to both of us every day that we're kind of sounding boards for one another. Yeah. And some days that means listening to each other event and other days that means, yeah. uh, not necessarily talking about work after work. And some days it's a little bit of both. Well, working with your husband and living with your husband, that is a fine line, my friend. So I'm still working on that myself. What about, yep. what about in, your, in your younger years? Um, some of the people or person who, yeah. you know, when, 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 pardon my French, but when shit hits the fan, um, how do you hold it all together? You know, I always received a lot of encouragement from my mom. Um, she was definitely a great role model to me. Um, she worked hard and she was very focused and she sacrificed a lot for her family. But, you know, growing up where I did in a very small rural community in Pennsylvania, um, let's just say that I was unique and I did not exactly fit in. And that was fine. I always walked to the beat of my own drum and I still do. But yeah. my mom was always the person who encouraged me to just continue being yourself, work hard, achieve your goals, set your goals, and don't be afraid to um, push the, not push those other people aside, but just keep them on the side. Yeah. Don't let them bother you. Don't let them get to you. Just do your thing because what you're doing, you're on the right path and you're on your own path and just follow that path. And she, she still encourages me to this day. Um, and she always tells me that, that she's proud of me. So it's just, it's really nice to have that encouragement from family as well. It's and not to say that my dad isn't, but she was a stay at home mom yeah. and he was a breadwinner. So, yeah, I, um, 
I have a similar story, but sort of opposite. So my grandfather, um, he was always just work, 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 work. Like you could not have fun if there was any business to take care of. And I mean, like maybe, <laughs> maybe this water bottle needed to be like put in the trash. Okay. And like, you can have fun, but if that water bottle was in the trash, then, you know, so work ethic was, was huge in our household. And now I kind of, you know, I appreciate that now. Obviously, when I wanted to go out and play or be on the phone or be a teenager or something, it was very annoying and I hated it. But doing doing the right thing every day, like one foot in front of the other instead of sideways or backwards, I think is is speaks volumes, you know, especially times like these that are very trying that people are like, okay, now what? Yeah. You know? I mean, that's how I started this whole podcast. You know, 50% of my job is business development. Well, once COVID hit, it's like, okay, well, now what? <laughs> you know, how do I how do I connect with people? How do I get other people's messages out the way I used to with an event or you know sharing a post or something on LinkedIn social media? So, yeah, this is this is important. It is important, and you you touched on something that makes me think of a question that I have for you because is if that's all right? Yeah, of course. So you are definitely someone since I've met you that you're just a source of inspiration. You're a source of positive energy. And, um, I, I, I feel like you're just always that Lindy and you know, how do you do it? How do you maintain that level of positive energy? Because I know that you've got lots of other things going on in the background. <laughs> That's a really good question. Um, since we only have an hour for the podcast, I'm give you the short version. And since my husband tells me I tell long stories, I'll give you the real short version. Um, you know, growing up, I, I saw a lot of things, definitely a um, little bit on the chaotic side. And no matter what happened, um, the people who did not make the right decisions, they never prospered. The people who got angry, never made him feel better when they were angry. The people who acted like that and didn't take care of business, nothing, they have nothing. They have nothing to show for it. And for me, I just think if life is easy, of course you're gonna be singing in the rain and you know, zippity doo dah. But it's when, it's when things start, like the heat kind of starts rising and you, you have to jump out of your comfort zone. Who do you want to be? And that's, that's pretty much what I always say to myself, who do I want to be? Five seconds, fight or flight, you get that feeling. And I want to be someone who helps the community. I want to be someone who you can call and I can help. I want to be that person. So that's, that's kind of how, how I do. I listen, I observe, and you know, try, to, try to fill the need. But I also know what it's like to be treated on the opposite side, and I just don't feel like doing that. I completely it? agree. No, I completely <laughs> agree. And it's just interesting because I choose to take a different, I choose to take a similar approach. So tell me, tell me, because hmm. you know, you mentioned living in a very small town that hmm. might not be as colorful as all we are, or maybe like hmm. these ruby red lips of mine. Hmm. Um, but you know, you, you like, we all, we all have a journey. We all, we all have this, you know, constant motivation that, that just kind of fuels us. So where does that, where does that lie for you? Um, I always knew that I would, I hate to use this word because I don't know that I believe in a destiny, but I knew that I would, there were greater things out there beyond uh, the town I grew up in. And um, that was just, that was just, it was never an option to stay there. And I, I desired that I worked toward that and I wanted to be in a place that was more diverse and I wanted to be in a place where they're just and surround myself with people who were more positive and share the positive energy that I had uh, as well. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of the short story. That's the short end of well, it. I see. I see that. I see that in your staff and I can't, I can't say it enough. I see that in your staff. I see that in your staff, your staff, your leadership, that is how your clients, your patients, your people, mm -hmm. your tribe, mm -hmm. you know, that is how they're thriving because they have someone 
They have people who want to be there. They have people who are creating those relationships. So, oh my gosh, mazel to you because this is, this is not an easy task. It's not an easy task. No, and you know, it's not. And something else that you touched on that I wholeheartedly believe in and have just experienced, I feel like when things are uncomfortable, like what's, what's the hat that you put on or which path are you going to take? Because <laughs> that, that's the time when you have the most opportunity for growth and whether you choose to embrace that discomfort yeah. and explore it and be curious about it or whether you choose to bottle it up. And I think we're seeing the results of that discomfort and what it does to a lot of people right now in both directions when they learn to embrace it and accept a new yeah. challenge versus yeah. when they don't. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen, uh, I've seen a couple of people, um, kind of find, find their way a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. be a little mm -hmm. more concise, um, for lack of a better term, find their superpower. Um, yeah. so what's your superpower? I know that you're authentic. I know that you're, uh -huh. doing, I know you're a great leader, but there's, but there's something about you. There's, there's energy that lives inside of you that comes out in some sort of superpower. What do you think that is? What was the second word that you said? You said authentic. No, not telling. <laughs> no, I cut out a little bit. I couldn't hear it. No, no. I said, I think that you're very authentic and genuine. And I oh, thank you. But there's, there's something else. There's something else there. <laughs> um, I consider myself to be very resilient. Um, a lot of stuff has come my way. And, you know, I certainly... Uh, empathize with you when you talk about growing up and chaos. Um, it was a, an interesting and challenging experience and I experienced things that no child should have to experience and it leaves an imprint on you. And um, I learned to be resilient at a very young age and I think it can take you down a path where you give up and I think it can take you down a path where you realize, you know, there is an end in sight. Um, but I have worked very hard throughout my personal life to, um, to work through those experiences and the impact, um, the impact of how that shaped me. And I really had to learn um, how to kind of modify how I view the world uh, as a result of that. But yeah, I have learned to appreciate how resilient I am. And I've also learned that I'm a lot stronger than I realize. Yeah. Yeah. How do you, how would you take all of those amazing qualities and apply that to your staff when, when you're, you're not in the regular world anymore, you're in like a new norm and, and, mm -hmm. You know, how many programs can you do? How many volunteers do you have? How do you, how do you use all of that integrity? Like integrity is, is, is huge. People are looking up to you. People are counting on you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, how do you, how do you do that with your team? A lot of communication, a lot of encouragement, a lot of just checking in. And even before COVID, there's more of it now, but a lot of, Hey, how are you? And just, right. you know, before COVID, we would have working lunches, whether we would go out or whether we would just eat in the office, but a lot of communication to just really make sure we're all on the same page and to continually nurture that communication. And also, I think it's really important to share expectations and be very clear you know, what's expected and what are the goals so that everybody has an opportunity to... Um, to um, participate in that and they're encouraged to participate in that and bring new ideas to the table because what we did yesterday might not work today. Yeah. So I understand the whole, um, communicating expectations, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to put a little, a little spin on this. Yeah. I communicate my expectations every day to my teenagers. <laughs> somehow, somehow what comes from me is not always what happens. So, um, you know, just give me an example. One thing, one thing you did empowered your staff member, which enabled some, some sort of, you know, developmental, I don't know, developmental something for someone. For a client or for a staff member? Staff member. Um, you know, 
last year's event was challenging in its own right. Every event is challenging in its own right. Uh, let's be honest, but we were short staffed because we had a staff member, um, who, um, took on a new career challenge and, and left the organization. So about two months before the big event last year, um, it was me and my colleague Jennifer. And I just really encouraged him like, you know what, let's, you know, we talked about the resources that she needed to be successful. And I, I, worked with her to identify resources within the organization that she could utilize to set her up for success because her big part of the project, I'm like, I need this to be your baby. And it's the silent auction. And, you know, the, kind of an integral part of events it's like that is to have a silent auction to raise the funds and make it fun for people who to make them actually want to bid on things. And um, in the past, I knew that that was one of the things that was kind of a, uh, a challenging area because it didn't always, the execution wasn't always good. And I got to tell you, she worked with staff to just work on things like the details, oh, like the gosh. bid sheets and the way she made little cute packages for things. Like we'd gotten a rental car from someone for a weekend and I'd gotten some gift cards for some restaurants in Palm Springs. So she made like a Palm Springs weekend getaway package, oh, but cool. like just the execution of that um, by empowering her to like, know, like not just, say oh you can do this but like to help set her up for success with the resources uh that and it just it, it worked out beautifully and i was so proud of her and um this year that is her baby once again all right all right well definitely gonna have you back on the show because i'm gonna have to know <laughs> you have to know how the couch potato went how everything went so We'll go from there. Um, I look forward to it. I'd be happy to do that. I know, right? So what are what are some of the other things um, that that have uplifted you? You know, like th there's, you know, I, I hate to focus on like struggle, but there are there are times where you you kind of reach your capacity of of knowledge and mm -hmm. of you know, trial and error and what has worked, you know, textbook case, what's, what's worked for you personally, for your organization in particular, mm -hmm. you know, how, how do you, how do you get your support? Who do you, who do you go to besides your boss or besides Bill? You know, I mean, those are, those are people like for me, I might have some books or some meditation. Yeah. Really yeah. For me. I got to like, calm myself, you know, I have my thoughts just racing. Where do you guys go? <laughs> I, you know, I definitely need to get out of my own head. And that's a big thing for me. And I have definitely found some through some friends of Lindy Pearson, uh, mm -hmm. ways to meditate. And I really appreciate that. That's always helpful. But, um, you know, I have a few friends who I Re stay in touch with on a regular basis and it could just be like a phone call to say i just need to talk just talk me down from a ledge let's talk about something other than work right. but i we could also you know, i have some friends who are in similar fields and you just pick up the phone hey how are you doing this what is it that you're doing because i'm just kind of at, i feel like i'm looking at a brick wall mm -hmm. um but if it weren't for those friends you know be it a best friend or just a great colleague or a mentor um, for whatever I need to talk about. They're there and, you know, shoot them a quick text. I need to talk or FaceTime or, I mean, there was one day I, um, a, a coworker who had literally just left Valley village and she and I remain in touch to this day, but I reached out to her our first week of working remotely from COVID. And I was just feeling so much stress, like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe like, when are we going to, when is this going to end? It was only one weekend. I was feeling so stuck. And I texted her one night and I said, I need to see another human besides Bill. <laughs> can, yeah. can we FaceTime? And we had a drink together on FaceTime and we talked and mm -hmm. Just you need that camaraderie. You need it. You need it because you know the only human contact I get right now is Bill, <laughs> and or, or like pseudo Hazel, you know, or Hazel, and I'm like Bill. I need a hug. <laughs> so you're just gonna have to buck up and hug me. Um, <laughs> and and Hazel, our Basset Hound, for sure. So um, I use I I pretty much use the same my friends. Um, but I, I call them something different. So like for us in the world of networking, you know, you have your circles and you have 
the exchange that that we're a part yeah. of and align women that I do and you know so on and so forth um, I call them my uh, the board of women that's awesome and um, it's people from all different stages um, some are friends some are work work friends whatever you want to call that but you know it's it's people that are in similar situations maybe a little bit different but we all get to talk and we all get to hear each other and we all get to feel human like we all get to celebrate small wins we all gripe about our our kids <laughs> maybe our partners maybe i'm just throwing it out there um but you know it makes you feel it makes you feel human it gives you that you know that spunk that kick in the butt that motivation that maybe you wouldn't want to hear from someone that you know you you might take it personal from your partner. You might take it personal from your boss and you're like, okay, I'm not working hard enough for okay, this or that, you know? So yeah, it's important Agreed. to have an outlet for sure. Oh, absolutely. We all need it. We all need to recharge. We all need an outlet because if you, yeah. you're no good to anyone if you're not ready, you know? If you could pick a mentor right now, who would it be? Or several? I have a few, um, shall I name names? Um, okay. So, stories, stories, stories. Okay. So I have a colleague who I used to work with in Washington, DC, and she's remained a friend for years. And her name is Sherry Whitworth. And, uh, Sherry and I, um, she actually took me from one team to bring me to hers because she saw something in me that I didn't necessarily see at the time. I was a senior project manager, a senior account director, something like that for this firm right. called 720 Strategies. And um, they're an awesome team. And um, at any rate, Sherry was leading the sales team and she procured Matt uh, to join the sales team. And uh, it was the first time I had ever done business development. So it was a big switch for me. But, you know, she encouraged me and she, I felt like she armed me with the resources. And um, I was able to, she modeled, I was able to pick and choose from her and other colleagues, like their tactics oh, and their cool. strategies that I, that I appreciated and kind of build my own uh, tool Maybe chest. Yours. I did. I did. And she and I still stay in touch. You know, we talk shop. We are resources for one another. I feel Love like sometimes that. she's more of a resource for me. But as friends go, mm -hmm. she's one of the best. And if I'm in D.C., I, I make an effort to see her. In fact, pre-COVID, I, I was just in D.C. I was supposed to see Celine Dion in concert. Mm -hmm. it, concert my heart there's no more concert I know. my heart will go on even though i'm very disappointed that i don't get to see mm -hmm. celine dion you know but um who knows when that will happen because it was postponed but she's one of the last people i saw before everything shut down and you know we touch base in fact i talked to her recently her her only child just went to college so she's going through a transition so, you know, it, it ebbs and flows yeah definitely but she's a great one. Definitely. Um, you know, I, I, my mentors change. Um, it depends what I'm going through. And I would say for the last six months, um, I've been doing a lot of reading. So I don't want to, I don't want to say, you know, one particular book has done it for me, but it's been, it's been really, really helpful to me. You know, a lot of business books I've been reading. You know, obviously, I love Keith Ferrazzi, so I'm going to just mention him. You guys should all, anyone listening, should read at least one of his books uh, or follow him on LinkedIn or social media or something. He is very inspiring, and he talks about real things. He talks about real people achieving real things, and that is super motivating right now for me. Um, definitely not my children in high school that on online zoom calls all day. That is not a motivating factor. Yeah. Um, so all this talk, all the shop talk with you and I, one of the main things I want to get through to our listeners is, you know, nonprofits. What can we as a community do for you, which we've touched, you know, how can we come to your virtual event? you know, which we've touched, um, you know, it, it's, it's really just supporting everyone. So if you could give anyone out there that is struggling in that kind of organization, what would some of your advice be? 
struggling in an organization similar to mine or yep. similar yeah. to yours, you know, relies heavily on, you know, grants from the government and yeah. owners and the board, everything. Um, you know, I think it's, it's important to look at what you're doing and what you've been doing and how can you adjust. Um, one of the things we did right away was to, you know, we knew that in-person events weren't going to fly for a while. So we really yeah. revamped our grant strategy and um, that has been helpful. It gave us the opportunity to revamp that process and our strategy. Um, but beyond that, just there are simple things, communicate, to the outside world, to your audience, however you're doing that. And we really made eff very intentional efforts to grow our audience, um, both on social media and um, our email newsletter and just traffic to our website um, and driving that there so that folks are getting information okay. from us um, and seeing us as whether they're seeing us as a resource or whether they're just, just seeing us as um, uh, kind of a nice uh, diversion from the from reality. Whatever it is, we want to maintain that contact. So, and the first one of the first things I say to anybody anytime now is, you know, just follow us. Follow us on social, so figure that you can out, figure out how you can connect. Because we're doing, people. yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. And All talk right, to well, other organizations. Sorry, talk no. to other organizations and see what they're doing. Talk partner to your up. friends. That's partner big. up. You know, we have we have partners in the region and we partner together and we have meetings and we just it could just be a phone call to be like, hey, how are you doing? That yeah. could lead to other things. You never know. You never know. Timing is everything. You right? never know what could happen. You never know. All right. Well, I hope everyone listening will get a chance to attend your event. If not, you can Thank contact you. me. L Pearson at Cressa.com. You can contact Matt at Matthew at VVC.org. And you know what? Even if you cannot attend the event, definitely follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter yes. at Valley Village LA because we are going to launch um, an online donor platform in the next couple of weeks with some silent auction items and as well as the ability to donate. So even if you can't attend and if you have the ability to give right now, I know a lot of people don't, but if you do, if you're fortunate enough to be able to do that, that's another way you can participate. Perfect. All right, guys. Well, that's a wrap. Thanks for joining us today and see you on the next episode. Level up with me. Bye guys. <laughs>